imagine you have got some contract information like this. So you have got the contract ID and sometimes the person may have signed a prior contract. In this case, we are talking about rental examples. So you might have a tenant that moved from one kind of a unit to another kind of unit. So you have got two contracts and we may want to see some other information about that prior contract as well in the current context. This kind of joins are called self joins. And today let's see how we can use Power Query to self join. Specifically, what we are trying to understand is, for example, let me pull up a contract. So here is a contract. Uh, this is RT1136 and they have a prior contract 1038 with us. So in the current contract, their weekly amount is $850. And I want to know what was the amount in the prior contract they signed with us. So that could be kind of doing a lookup or some other kind of a thing on this and then see that that was also 850. But I want to be able to see that in this row. So this is where we could use the self join feature of Power Query. I'm going to save this and jump into Power BI and let's make a blank report. Let's pull that data. It's an Excel file. I've got the file for you in the video description. Feel free to download it and let's just get that data. So once we have this data, I'm going to go into transform data and here is the previous contract ID. Essentially what we want is we want to take this and join it with the rental contract in the same table and then pull up the prior rental value or whatever weekly amount or prior date activated or date moved in or any other details here. So to do this, what you want to do is in the home ribbon, you'll see that there is a merge queries option. So we're going to tap on that and we are going to select the previous contract ID column and select the same table again. So you want to have the same table contracts table both up and down and join this with the rental contract ID. So that's the important bit prior contract ID here gets joined with the current contract here. This is going to join and then it might find something like 94 out of 500 rows from the first table. If the prior contract ID doesn't have nulls or blank values and it has some other value like a default value, you may want to first blank it out before joining. Otherwise, you will get undesired results. So once this is done, we are going to click OK and we will have this table here. What I want to do is I want to first double click on this and rename this as prior and then expand this table. I don't want any of these fields. I just want, for example, what is the weekly amount and what is the date they moved out in the prior contract. So we will select those two and we will use the use original column name as prefix. That way we can see them as prior dot weekly amount prior dot date moved out. And that information will be here. It will be null for all the people who don't have a prior contract. So already this is null that will also be null. I can adjust these values later, but for now our Power Query work is done. I can close and apply. And once we are in Power BI or Excel or wherever else this data is coming in, you can pretty much, for example, see all the information. You can see what is the prior weekly amount and weekly amount. And for example, you know, explore the trends by this or create measures or do whatever you want. So that's how you could do the self joins on the same table. You could also nest these joins. So for example, if I want to make a chain of things, so I want to be able to go to that prior contract and see if there is a prior contract before that. This kind of thing helps if I want to form an entire chain of transactions and then maybe use that to build a relationship profile or something like that. That is very handy, but it does get very slow with Power Query because I noticed that once we start chaining, the joins were becoming slower and slower. So if you have got lots of data and you need to do this multiple levels deep, I suggest using SQL for that kind of work. Anyhow, let me know in the comments what you think about this and how you're planning to use it. I'll catch you elsewhere. Bye.